Tales from Thetheria! Episodes 1 through 4, Recap! Hello out there, Dungeons and Dragons fans! Brad Radford here, alongside my co-host and hopefully organ donor friend, Chip Whipley. Ah, glad to be here, but let me tell you, you are not gonna want my liver. It's oh, I perfect. will get your organs. I will get them all. Anyway, we've got a great recap here. We'll be recapping a little Tales of Tetheria, seeing where we are in the season. Uh, but first, before we get into that, uh, there's a new league here. It's, uh, let me check my notes, something called Stuff of Legends. Ah, yes, it's a it's a new show on the Jovenshire channel yes. that includes puppetry and Dungeons and Dragons, the two nerdiest things you can find on the internet in one place. <laughs> No one's getting laid on that set, Brad. <laughs> you can say that again, but don't. This has already gone live, I believe? Uh, yeah, uh, we're getting reports here from the interwebs that the first episode is already out uh, online at youtube.com slash thejovenshire right now, and new episodes coming out every single Tuesday. Quite the lineup, too. I like this, uh, this hatchet hand. He's, he's new, yet familiar somehow. Uh, I think somehow, he's gonna be a real yeah. breakout star. Uh, you know, he was the real diva on set, I've heard. I feel like people mm. never want to work with Hatchet. Uh, he seems so down to earth, though. No. I feel like, uh... He wasn't wearing pants the whole time. <laughs> what? Yeah, Blast that's true. <laughs> These are pants. You're wearing pants They're right now. They're pants, yeah. Uh, pants You're wearing pajamas, overrated. currently. Yes. Anyway, be sure and check that out. There'll be a link in the description. In the meantime... Do people still go to descriptions? I don't think so. I, find out. I haven't seen a description in years. Alright, let's jump into this Tales of Tetheria recap. And the first thing we gotta talk about, this new player, uh, this Valamir. Oh, yes. Uh, what is this guy doing in front of the camera? Definitely has got a face for uh, executive producer director status, if you ask me. Oh. I was thinking he had a face for like, uh, for like golf course hobo. But oh. anyway, you know, they hang so out like, around the fifth green. Like, like classy yet poor. Well, yes, yes, yes. exactly. Great stash though, great stash. Great stash, love his stash. Yeah, love the stash. Uh, he's got the boat, so he's a threat from downtown. Yep, from or, or uptown. He's yeah. an uptown girl, downtown guy. Right? I'm, I'm worried though that he just doesn't have the stomach for this sort of fierce competition. You know, we've seen in parts of this adventure that the moment blood is drawn, Falomir's not really a guy you want on your side. And when traveling around with a bunch of murder hobos, well, you're gonna come across some blood. What? Well, yes, they, they are kind of murder hobos, but they have a mission. They do they're have after a, mission. a bounty. Because they're now bounty hunters. They're now bounty hunters. In a very legitimate bounty hunting crew that was definitely well, existing before the people walked into that bar. But is it though, Chip? Because it really seems like it's kind of maybe was uh, made uh, up. This just in, yes, I'm be told it's legitimate. All right, well, it yeah. looks like you have an earpiece, so I, I won't do. question it. You shouldn't. Big surprise, early in the season, we see uh, Deborah coming back. That was a giant surprise from a tiny rock. Yes, and uh, I, I had thought he'd be out for the whole season due to being dead, very dead. Yes, being dead, I thought would keep him out of the action. You know, uh, like the MCU, dying in D&D really means jack squat, and Jack left town. Yes! I, is that a saying? No. Anyway, yeah, he's, he's, he's joining the starting lineup here, and I'm excited to see him back. And then, of course, you've got the veterans. Kaiser ah. and Krulax, the heart and soul of the team. The heart and soul of the team in a soulless body. Yes, 100%, yes. Uh, which one is the heart, and which one's the soul, do you think? I think, uh, probably Krulax is the heart, and Kaizen is the soul. Based Elves on... are more spiritual, oh, okay. Kaizen is and, and an like elf. Fiery heart and, is Krulax. Yeah, Krulax has the heart. Uh. And they're really gonna get the job done. You know, let me ask you a question. Krulax versus Hatchman, who would win? Whew, that's a tough one. Or become instant besties because yeah, one of them has I don't a think hatchet. I don't think they would fight. He literally has an axe on his hand. Yeah, I'm I'm actually thinking they might be a bit related. They might, they could, do you yes. think? Oh, ooh. ooh. Yeah, but uh, ooh. We, we don't know yet. We don't know Nothing's yet. Nothing's confirmed. We have to watch that uh, Stuff of Legend show to find out, I suppose. So we've got we've got the team here. Uh, quite a, strong, a good team. It's a, it's strong, a strong starting team. lineup. Strong I like it. I like seeing Deborah back. Uh, and, and their opponents, in this first matchup, look like they're going to be newcomers uh, Quacha and Batu, this mm. necromancy team, mm. uh, taking on the Bounty Bros. Uh, also, they're facing them in home f with home field advantage because they are literally in a graveyard surrounded by dead people. Yes, they are, and they had hoped to be drafting a, a full lineup for this match, but unfortunately, their necromancy spell failed miserably. Oh, so you hate to see that yeah. happen. 
Gonna be a bit of a power play here, a little four on two action. I don't think they're gonna be able to hold their ground against this team. You know, the first thing they teach us in anchor school is the difference between an opossum and a possum. Which is? Size, density. Oh, size, density. Yes. Well, yes. Apparently the necromancers did not know that because uh, they failed and were forced to take them on uh, t just the two of them. Yeah. By the way, you mentioned opossums. Hey, hey, what do you think my name would be if I were a sheep, Chip? If you were a sheep, I don't really see the connection there, but I'll play along. I would think your name would be Brad Sheepford. No, no, it'd be Bad Radford. Mm, I am a stupid bitch for thinking otherwise. That was the right answer. Yes, yeah, that thank you. That was the right answer. <laughs> Jumping back into it. Uh, so we, we saw how this two on four. Your hair's different. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Pretty sure it's always been like oh, this, okay. Chip. I, I, I don't pay attention. Yeah, it's always been like I'm this, Chip. I'm drunk half the time. Well, Included a little time. more than half. You're drunk half the time and you're extremely drunk the other half. <laughs> That's me, folks. Tell your kids. So, so two on four. Should be an easy Should matchup for easy. our bounty bros. Unfortunately, uh, a bit of a wild card in the mix. We've got Debra, who, uh, while the fighting was happening, managed to light everything on fire. Kaizen was up there, uh, beating the hell out of a frog. Uh, what, what, what is with the intense hatred for frogs? I, you know, I was told that it has something to do with frogs inspiring hate in the Milfwood forests, but, you know, last time I licked a frog, all I wanted to do was love everyone, so I don't get it. <laughs> you lick a lot of frogs, do you, Chip? I love drugs. What? Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> thank you for clarifying that. Uh, yeah, Kaizen, uh, beating Quacha mercilessly, punch after punch, and it appears Quacha's only defense was to, uh, kind of leak poisonous fluid into mm. the abrasions mm -hmm. on Kaizen's fists, which were there because, you know, your fists yeah, get abrasions if you yeah. punch. Yeah, yeah, cause they're hitting like it's bone physics. and skin. Uh, but the, the poison seeped in, poisoned uh, Kaizen, not enough to uh, to stop her from, from mercilessly pummeling Quacha into a pulp. But uh, eventually she did stop because everything was on fire. Everything and, uh, was on fire. Why was everything on fire? We did glaze over that. I glazed right over that. Yeah. Like a fine Christmas ham. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> now Deborah made a real rookie mistake out there. He set all the caskets on fire while his own teammate was atop the caskets. Yeah, Kaizen found herself on top of these caskets, not even know they were on fire until she was already in the midst of it. And you know, communication is the key to every relationship. Or at least that's what the third marriage counselor told me. Hmm. Good advice. Yeah, didn't work. No. Uh, astutely noted by Falamir. Not a word. This, astutely? Not a word? Uh, astutely. Pretty... Not There's a... no B in astutely, Chip. Really? Yep. Man, maybe I am drunk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, as it was astutely noted by Falamir that, you know, in most horror films, when you see a zombie catch on fire, it doesn't destroy the brain. So now you just have an undead creature who's on fire chasing after you. So I don't feel like a lot of logic was used there. Some undead creatures do fear fire though. Frankenstein. Ah. Classic return from the dead creature, hated fire. I've got nothing. Yep. Uh, Falamir, by the way, uh, before this all started, knocked over the uh, the crock of necromancy juice. Uh, and, interesting play. Uh, interesting play. I think smart play. It's good to see a DMD group with a character that really uses their head first to figure out how mm -hmm. to stop a situation mm -hmm. from getting out of hand. Oh yes, because it totally that totally stopped it from getting out of hand with well, everything on fire. You know, Fetching I fire feel like moments later. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, Falamir had a strong play, but did not expect mm. the rock monster to, you know, burn everything. Mm. Krulax uh, really taking command of the situation, charging in. A strong leader. Grabbing uh, grabbing that bounty, getting the bounty out of the flames, because it has to be taken alive. Needed alive. Yep, and, uh, and really coming through for that one. Uh, big plays by him, but we expect nothing less. No, we really should expect nothing and less. And already shaping Axe up puns to be the and saving the day. Yeah, really shaping up to be MVP. And eating the last donut in a box at the office. Mmm, delicious donuts. So they took that match home. Quacha and Batu having to go home with a big L. Uh, yeah. And uh, and they move on. In, they advance our, in the season. Uh, though our winning team did not make out, make it out unscathed. There mm. was a lot of friction on the field between some of the members. I hear that Feldmere didn't even want the rock monster on their team, Deborah, because he had hired only two other individuals. This would mean he'd have to cut his split with everyone, and Feldmere seems to be a mm, stingy individual. Yeah, there's some, some salary cap requirements or something going on there. Yeah, we don't know. There's a little friction behind the scenes of that team. It's kind of a shack 
Kobe thing. And that's they're why we they're say, on the same team, but they don't like each other. Yeah, never talk finances with your teammates. That's right, Chip. How also, are your organs? HR. No, what? My, mm -hmm. They're okay. Oh, okay. Right. What do you want organs for? What? Well, uh, various things. Okay, various things. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the second match of the season. Uh, they were facing off against Team Golden Fist. Interesting, uh, and Team Golden Fist recently traded for uh, a player that they're familiar with, Gary. Yeah. Gary joining the team. And, uh, uh, a fan favorite, a fan favorite yeah. showing up. I don't think people expected it, but after we see Deborah come back from literally the dead, I guess anything can happen. Yeah, and you know, uh, Gary is kind of a hit or miss guy. Sometimes he's your friend, he's helping you take out cultists, and here as we see, sometimes uh, not so much. Leading up this this Golden Fist team in what can only be described as a, pretty much an ambush. Uh, I mean, they were just Team Bounty Bros were just sitting there on the Bounty road. Bounty Bros. Yeah. yeah. Good team name. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they were just, you know, uh, starting their day, you know, trying to get their first breakfast and not even second breakfast, just without any real energy. And here comes the Golden uh, the golden Fist saying, hey, we're going to mess your day up. Yeah, they shot Krulax. I'm very... How dare they? I'm very against people Does shooting Krulax. Does not sound like MVP Chip. material. What? Well, Krulax didn't even know the match had started yet. I only like MVP. Krulax, I Krulax was trying to talk, okay? I only like MVP players who don't get shot. Chip, it was a, <laughs> Jesus, okay. Okay, Chip Trump. Listen, uh, it was a cheap shot. The match hadn't even started yet. Yeah. The ref hadn't told them to touch gloves and they just started shooting. It is dark. Uh, though we did see an interesting interaction early on when Deborah decided to shrink down in size. Mm -hmm. Logically, not the play people were expecting, but sometimes you need that kind of wit and style to get past the defenses. Do you though, Chip? No, it, I don't think you do. It kind of seems like he's just doing whatever comes to mind <laughs> at the time. Whatever comes to mind and then no does strategy. the opposite yes. thing you should do. Yes, uh, he shrunk down. His gambit uh, to convince them that he was a member of the Golden Fist obviously failed and uh, they were engaged in combat. Uh, Krulax, of course, taking that shot to the mm -hmm. shoulder and then firing right back though with the throwing axe, uh, but then getting shot again in his other shoulder. Uh, that, those like that injuries could be career ending. Yeah, kind of like that scene from Ace Ventura 2 when nature calls. Yeah, we can uh. cut that in. Uh, uh, uh. I'm a, kind of an aficionado when it comes to Ace Ventura. Are you? Yeah. I know I'm, every I'm, cartoon, every cartoon episode by heart. There, there was a cartoon? Yeah, voiced by Rob Paulson, who also voiced uh, the mask in the mask cartoon. Huh. Yeah. Uh, getting back to Tales from the Theater. Now, what was Falamir doing uh, when this all went down? I believe he was trying to escape with the bounty. Ah, uh, yes. Very smart play here. Mm, uh, though some uh, players without a high enough intelligence might not see no. the strategy here. Because you he, say strategy, Chip. I say cowardice. Well, tomato, when you look tomato. At a but also, he's a coward. A quarterback is still the team leader, even when not on offense. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you have to be thinking of the bigger play. They are right. bounty hunters. They got to get that bounty out of there, well, which the Golden Fist wanted. Well, Chip, what you normally don't see is the quarterback take the football and then run away in the other direction from his team. You've obviously never seen the Buffalo Bills play. <laughs> no, I know. I know very little about real sports, Chip. I've just uh, taken on the sportscaster persona oh, to talk nice. about Dungeons and Dragons. Ah, that's my man. Yes. Uh, so he tried to run with the bounty, shut down by his own teammate, by Kaiser. his own teammate. A lot of infighting here. We mentioned the Shaq-Kobe dynamic before, yeah. but it might be a two Shaqs, two Kobe dynamic where there's multiple... Love that movie starring I Vin Diesel. I can't think of another two players that were on the same team and didn't like each other. Uh, <laughs> Bugs Bunny Daffy Duck, Space Jam, 1996. Space Jam. Excellent analogy, thank, thank you. you. So yeah, we've got a lot of infighting happening there, but they did uh, manage to pull it together. Uh, Krulax, uh, unfortunately, uh, I'm, I'm a you know I'm a big fan, but he uh, kind of seen the tattoo. Yeah, he's it's a, it's very erotic. It is. <laughs> uh, he kind of whipped. Uh, His pubes are the beard. No, stop, stop. Oh. This will all be cut out. <laughs> they. <laughs> He had an open shot, he was wide open, he had the sticky bomb and uh, just whiffed bricks. Uh, didn't get anywhere near the opponents. Wasn't or feeling, uh, I feel like Krulak somehow was still the most effective in this fight though, even though he didn't do as much, mainly because his team was utter useless. Well, I wouldn't say that, Chip. Uh, it was, after all, uh, Deborah 
who set ablaze both oh, Terry and Mary right. with a powerful blast from those burning hands while uh, Terry of the Golden Fist, not very intelligent, stepped no. right in the sticky bomb, Into took it. extra damage from that, mm -hmm. and uh, burned himself to a crisp. Oh, uh, and, uh, we're actually hearing in from a scientist explaining how that weird cornball fireball works. Well, you see, Chip, it was corn husks, and then uh, they covered husks. the corn husks with lantern yeah. oil. And then the science is saying, uh, not real science? Got it, got it. I will make a sticky bomb right got here it. and now. Wait a second, that Get scientist was husks. just killed. Huh. Excellent. Uh, did you do that? What? I know, but I applaud whoever did. Are his organs intact? <laughs> As I said, Deborah setting them ablaze, Kaizen coming in to punch Mary right in that burn wound and end her career, and uh, and you know, Gary just mysteriously disappearing. I'm sure we haven't seen the last of him. But I bet he hopes that he's seen the last of this group, especially that Falomir, because that Falomir is a sure shot, a bright individual, a terror of the peaks, a dastardly Fiend of the Shadows. That's a magic card. It is. I don't know about Fiend of the Shadows. I'm playing Magic the Gathering on my laptop hey, right now. Hey, no, just shut that off. Right. We're trying to do a show here. I was winning. Unprofessional, Chip. Unprofessional. I platinum. I'm Diamond. I'm just saying. Anyway, uh, what what did Falamir do? He set the wagon on fire? Uh, n did he? Yeah. Did he? With a fire arrow. That was smart. Yeah, he did do that. I, hmm. I remember now. Uh, but again, I really want to go back to the brilliance that was not seen here, where he was trying to get the bounty out of the way so that he could attack the enemies from behind. But before this plan could be enacted, his team turned on him. Uh, seems like cowardice, and his team uh, kept them in line by knocking him right off that horse. I commend Kaizen for her quick thinking. Mm, I hope she gets traded. Nah, nah, that will never happen. So. Gary escaped, but in overall, uh, a second victory, they will advance uh, once again. Team Bounty Bros will move on to their next match, and I'm excited to see uh, where this team will go from here. Maybe they'll take the finals, maybe they won't, but uh, either way, it'll be, a, it, it'll be a journey. It's a real underdog tale if the dog didn't actually have a tail. Kind of like one of those, you know, bulldogs where they chop the tail off. When you start a sentence, Chip, do you have any idea where it's going, or do you... I don't even know how I got okay. here. Okay. All right, well, thank you so much, Chip Whipley. Uh, we'll be back next week with another adventure in the world of Tales from Tetheria. Also, do not forget to check out Stuff of Legends. Uh, links in the description. Yeah, I hear the host has a mighty good mustache. Uh, well, it's a little creepy, but yes, uh, I guess it could Pretty be considered good. good. Yeah. Uh, thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time. Hey, sorry for the filler episode. Uh, we're getting the next episode ready. It'll be ready to go next week. That's a cruel axe promise. In the meantime, you can watch the last episode here, or uh, when the new episode is ready, it'll be over here. So you can watch everything over there. Okay, see ya.